All right, is everyone good now? Yeah. All right, awesome. Yeah, I'm good. Can I, can I just get thumbs up from all the judges and competitors just to triple check? All right, awesome. All right, um, time starts now. Contention one is Israel. Withdrawal creates a major geopolitical vacuum for Iran to fill, creating an existential threat for Israel. As Abraham in 20 finds that should the United States withdraw, Israel will find itself in a war. The United States is the main breaks. Withdrawal would lead to an escalation. There won't be any deterrence. Iran has been a major concern for Israel, and thousands of pro-Iranian proxies not far from Israel's border are a major threat. The resulting insecurity motivates Israeli policymakers to attack Iran, as Abbott in 14 finds that the danger in Israel is they may take it upon themselves to act. Israel's being restrained by the United States for now, but there may become a time when they undertake their own foreign policy, which is that, quote, no enemy should threaten Israel's existence, end quote, which they believe that Iran does. For containment to work with the United States, there needs to be military force, as Iran will require a large sustained pressure. The risks involved in this conflict are astronomical, as Avery in 13 finds that Israeli attack on Iran might escalate into a nuclear war, as a minor conflict would escalate, as Russia and China, allies of Iran, might also be drawn into such a war and cause the price of oil to reach unheard of highs, with catastrophic effects in the global economy. Besides making areas uninhabitable, a nuclear war would damage global agriculture to an extent that a global of unknown proportions would result. Contention two is proxy conflicts. U.S. military pressure forces Iran to negotiate with the GCC, and contestant force is key to regional peace, as Murmi in 20 finds that the United States has made moves bringing Iran to the negotiating table. A decisive response is crucial to convince Iran that there will be devastating consequences, as Iran will now see the benefits of negotiations. As Iran, when it proposed a regional dialogue to increase the chances of successful negotiations, it is thus crucial to maintain military and economic pressure. Yet, withdrawal removes any lower leverage at all, as Brands in 18 finds that if the U.S. retreats, they will lose restraining leverage. It will leave behind a more chaotic, rivalrous environment in which other nations feel forced to fend for themselves. Gulf monarchies feared it bitterly, but diplomatic cooperation has achieved because Washington has some provided assurance. This is in two specific areas. First is Iran. Naval presence in the Gulf is key. As recent surges forced Iran to back down, only presence can restrain Iran. Baldur 20. Nothing makes an adversary think twice more than the threat of an aircraft carrier, ships, weapon systems, and thousands of troops the U.S. has poured into the region to a message that Iran has received. There has been a visible reduction in Tehran's military posture as Iran brought its ballistic military force back down from a heightened state of readiness. Withdrawal creates a power vacuum and ensures Iranian aggression, as the USS Cass in 15 finds that Iran poses a regional and security threat, as they seek to export ideology throughout a conventional army, terrorist proxies, and weapon trafficking. U.S. disengagement could create the opportunity for Iran to increase to support to terrorist organizations. Continued military presence will deter Iran, and it is the single most important indicator of our overall commitment to the security. Second is in Saudi Arabia. U.S.-Saudi Arabia security ties are strong now, as Trump ramped up support after recent Iranian attacks. As Blanchard in 20 finds that close U.S. Saudi shared concerns over Iran and have renewed logic for continued strategic cooperation. Trump has strengthened ties to Saudi leaders and security cooperations have continued. Amid missile and drone strikes attacks on the kingdom attributed to the Iran, Trump deployed additional U.S. troops and equipment to Saudi Arabia. If the U.S. withdraws, Saudi Arabia will feel compelled to take agenda into their own hands, and that creates proxy conflicts in the regions. As McKinnis in 17 finds that Gulf states may feel compelled to contest Iran's control if the American presence decreases. Saudi Arabia will not tolerate an Iranian direct proxy army on its northern border. The GCC states may invest in Sunni proxy forces to undermine the Saudi Arabia or the Iranian activities in Iraq, further fueling sectarian conflict. The continued U.S. presence in the Gulf will also be essential to prevent escalation and GCC conflicts. History empirically finds that when Saudi Arabia feels vulnerable, they lash out. Goldenberg in 17 explains that lack of trust in the United States has led Saudi Arabia to begin acting more aggressively out of insecurity, arming groups in Syria, intervening in Bahrain, and launching their intervention in Yemen. The the impact is preventing deadly proxy wars. Each one is ever more devastating than the next. As the passionate eye from the CBC finds that proxy wars ultimately leave the losers, which are millions of civilians, caught in the crossfire. There has been over a million casualties in the Middle East from proxy wars alone. In order to keep that number smaller, it is vital that you vote negative. Um, yeah, can I see the, I think it was like Mermi or it was like the first card and your second intention like us is making moves to get out yeah of uh we read direct quotes from evidence so if you just look at the file i sent you oh. the first piece of evidence on the second contention is mermy and everything that is highlighted we have read all right i'm gonna download that doc i'll let you know when it comes up okay Oh, what was the name of the author? If I got it right, is it like M? So like, oh, I, I found it. So we'll start. M-E-M-R-I, I believe. 
Yep. All right. I got it. So we can go ahead and start prep now. All right, those eight seconds, we're good. All right, everyone's ready, right? Correct. Okay. We can start time now. We affirm with one observation, K-20 explains the COVID-19 dysfunction is a catalyst for peace in the Middle East for two reasons. First is diverting resources. Many governments are preparing for serious outbreaks in their country and are currently not able to support or organize any military ventures. Second is mutual understanding. States are beginning to recognize that they cannot fight the pandemic in isolation and are now opening up to new routes of regional cooperation, reducing tensions in the region. This wave of peace is already materializing. Qatar and Kuwait have donated $10 million in medical supplies to Iran. The UAE has coordinated with the WHO to deliver aid to the Arab states and terror has receded across the region. Overall, Krieger 20 concludes that the Middle East can turn the coronavirus crisis into an opportunity for long lasting stability. With that, contention one is Iraq. Lawfare 20 writes that the United States is developing a campaign to squash key groups of Iran supported PMF militia groups in Iraq after recent coalition deaths in the region. He continues that this new military campaign will require thousands of American troops in Iraq, diverting the resources from peace building in the region. Thankfully, if you affirm you stop Trump from carrying out these operations. However, if these operations go through, disaster will follow. Night 20 warns if the U.S. pulls the trigger on these operations, it will irreparably fray existing relations with Iraq. 320 furthers that this response to COVID-19 pandemic and already deteriorating security situations, U.S.-Iraq relations in 2020 have never been worse. al Nuri 20 continues that if U.S. were to attack these PMF-based militias now, Iraq would have no choice but to strengthen its reliance with Iran. This would be fatal as Jihad 20 concludes if the United States no longer sees assets to protect Iraq, Trump and his hawks will likely view it as an arena by which to combat Iran, thus implementing sanctions. The impact is children's lives. El 20 indicates that the last time sanctions were imposed in Iraq, 227,000 children died of malnutrition. Contention two is the Middle Peace. Codes 20 explains that a lack of cooperation amongst regional states is the key issue in destabilizing the Persian Gulf today, affirming opens the door for regional cooperation in two ways. First is uniting the Arab states. Codes explains since the 1980s, American presence in the Gulf has inhibited any Arab state security initiatives by creating preference for bilateralism. Gunatsky 18 confirms the convenience of American defense umbrella has contributed to a lack of desire to participate in any serious joint security ventures or the foundations of regional peace. After 19, 19 confirms shifting to a smaller American presence would allow local actors to create alliances that otherwise would already exist. Velasco 17 writes that multi-actor cooperative agreements in the Middle East are 6.7 times better at forming long-lasting peace agreements and with outside actors. Second is facilitating Arab-Iranian relations. Codes explains that regional security suffers from the binary option of supporting the U.S. or supporting Iran, as America refuses to accept Iran in any regional discussions and Iran refuses to accommodate the U.S. CAMAC 20 confirms that reversing this bias against engagement is the crucial ingredient in creating a less turbulent regional environment. And Hand 19 continues, U.S.'s anti-Iran policy has meant that Iran's peace initiatives have encountered formidable obstacles, thus preventing the escalation and a plan to promote peace amongst the states. Affirming solves as McKeel 19 writes that while Iran has begun to acknowledge that resolving regional tensions through a regional framework is necessary for domestic stability, American presence and in is inhibiting any Persian efforts. Offering 19 writes that this multilateralism would open new paths towards direct and constructive dialogue, reducing tensions that are affecting the two countries and the region. McKeel confirms that any successful and enduring re regional de-escalation will ultimately require recognition and compromise between both the Arab states and Iran. Overall, cooperation is key for establishing enduring peace. CAMAC 20 finds that in the Middle East, the absence of mechanisms for diplomatic engagement feeds security dilemmas across multiple interstate relations, which paves the way for inevitable conflict down the line. Even if regional cooperation does not completely prevent all future unrest, however, affirming provides a means by which it can be proactively dealt with if it, if it occurs. For these reasons, we affirm. Do you mind if I call for a few pieces of evidence? Mm -hmm. um, the evidence that basically just says we're going to sanction Iraq? Mm -hmm. Uh, Asher 19 and the kill. Uh, which part of the kill? I think we said it three different times. I think the last part. Right. It's like right at the end. If you have an a kill there.
All right, yeah, now we're just grabbing the last one. We'll send them all at once. All right, it's sending now. It's sent. I just wanted to look at those during crossfire, so oh. we can start that now. Yeah. So we're not going to use prep. Uh, Sophia, are you good for cross? Yeah. Wait, wait. Uh -huh. wait, real quick. Are we using prep? Did we use prep for your cards? Mm -hmm. what? Wait, we used we use nine seconds for your cards. You could have read them during cross. I mean, uh, I was just saying we're going to read them during You want to take... Mind. I'll take nine seconds back. Nine seconds? No, no, no. Well, like, if you guys aren't going to use prep for them, and took prep, you can. You could have read them during crossfire. You've run the prep. It's nine seconds. Let's just move on with the debate. What if, what if we'd rather have you read them on prep time? That's our. That's the thing. What? You what can have your nine seconds back. You can have your nine seconds back. All right. So that, I'm just making sure I want to like nice and equal. All right. We're ready. All right. We're ready. You can have the first question. All right, you mind if I get the first question? Yeah. All right, cool. Um, time starts now. If we don't reduce presence, why would we sanction Iraq? What? Oh, okay, because what happens if we aren't going to reduce our presence and we're going to conduct these operations, that's our link, but essentially it's going to fray all existing relationships between US and Iraq. When we see that happen, the Trump administration no longer sees any incentive to have Iraq as an ally, so they use it as a method to combat Iran and put sanctions on Iraq in order to hurt Iran financially. So I guess my question is, in the world of the negative, there are still troops. So what I'm failing to understand yeah. is there, there is always yeah. a vested interest for the US to be there, right? And insofar as the troops are there, they're securizing their assets yeah, no. in Iraq. So why do they sanction if yeah, there's no, still US troops in, there? In the status quo, we're planning on conducting an operation that if are allowed to continue to go through, will completely fray all relations with Iraq. If we don't stop those that operation by pulling out, it's going okay. to fray relations. And I guess, quick follow-up. Uh, uh, can I ask quickly about that operation? It's like literally yeah. two seconds. What is yeah. that operation and what piece of so, evidence talks about it? Yeah, so we have a couple pieces of evidence. First, we have our lawfare evidence, and then we have another evidence from the New York Times. It's basically just trying to eliminate PMF militia groups in the region. Okay. Because that makes sense. Attacking coalition forces. Yeah, yeah, that makes sense. That All makes right, sense. so let's talk about your nuclear war scenario. So who is sure. this nuclear war going to be between? So you're talking, I'm assuming you're talking about the Israel, Israel contention, right? Yeah. Yeah. So yeah, our Avery evidence kind of talks about how the Israeli first strike upon Iran would lead to a great power war in which Russia and the United States and, and China would be drawn in because of the individualized inter like interdependency. Okay, so you say it's between US, China, Russia. Yeah, it's a great powers war, who's, right? So who's the one that fires the first shot? The yeah, first? so it, our argument is about an Israeli preemptive strike. Uh, the warranting is twofold. Firstly, uh, because Iran is encroaching on Israel Israel's border in a world right, without US military presence. Weapons? So, so the move to nuclear weapons, it's like a, it's like a spiral of escalation, right? So is Israel's going to first strike Iran? I mean, has it, Iran has any sort of conflict ever spiraled to escalation to the point of In the Middle weapons? East, no. And the reason for that is because we've always had military no, presence. There's other, but all of our evidence other says- reasons is that nuclear war in and of itself, there's things that will prevent that even if there can be like- Yeah, so we, if you're going to make a mutually assured destructive argument, we can read blocks to that in summary or in rebuttal. I mean, That's probably a debate we should have. What later. are your responses to mutually assured destruction then? So obviously you haven't read responses That's yet so i'm not really going to go over all them right, in cross right, yeah, but no, we no. would say this scenario is distinctive there's always been a u.s military presence in the gulf um so mm -hmm. on your king 19 overview um it is true like let's say it's true that covid 19 is bringing peace right now why should we vote affirmative yes. and so, ending any of that peace agreements that are apparently yeah yeah, yeah 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 so let me say so what our observation does it basically just gives you an urgency to vote affirmative because right now there is peace and we can build what our Kreger evidence says is that we need to build on that to form the alliances so, that we talk about in our second case. let me get this straight so your in evidence in order to get anything off of our now it's short, -term. Mm -hmm. it's short term peace, such as like okay. cooperation, like medical aid and stuff like that. But we can and capitalize on that if we win our second contention. So it's about negotiations, right? Like the framework for peace being built up into negotiations, correct? Yeah, like yeah. That, that's okay. Perfect. Perfect. That's time. Yeah. Do you mind if I see another piece of evidence? Yeah. 
the we're like doing this attack on Iraq or whatever. Oh yeah. All right, it's been sent. Uh, I'm pulling it up. Yeah, I'm going to take prep in a second once I start reading it. OK, starting prep now. Uh, 10 seconds. Uh, I'm going to send out my speech doc real quick. Okay. Let me know when everyone gets that before I start. I don't plan to read it, so. Oh, no, no. I'm just, um, just in case they wanted to read any evidence during the, like the other team wanted to read any evidence during my speech and just have easy access if they call for it after. Makes sense. All right. Yeah, I'm okay. downloading it real quick. Yeah, I just got it. So. Okay, cool. Wait, wait, can you, can you give us one? Yeah, yeah, 100%. Just let me know when you're ready. All right, we're good. Okay, cool. Um, just as general order, nothing fancy, top down. Okay. At the top of the case, they tell you that COVID-19 is bringing peace, but they are wrong about this. What Clark finds from actually three days ago is that if COVID-19 were to do anything, it would actually increase aggression, which gives us another incentive why we need the United States force in order to bring the Iran to the negotiating table. If we remove our presence, then that they would be try to be sneaky and use this as a way advantageous to gain regional ex expansionism, but our evidence says that negotiations are happening because of U.S. troops. If we pull out, they don't, they don't happen. Their first contention talks about Iraq. They first tell you that we're increasing troops. No. The Associated Press, which postdates their evidence, literally on March 30th, actually says that we are consolidating our power and don't want to increase troops in the region. Trump is literally an isolationist. He's not going to do this mission that we talk about. But even if he does, we're not going to pull our troops for three reasons. First, O'Sullivan finds in 2020 that instead we would move towards negotiations that would actually want to keep a lot of our presence there. Secondly, Saab in 2020 finds that we want to ensure peace in the region, and we view our Iraqi Iran troop, or Iraqi troops as vital for this, not just to fight back against this one force, but to deter Iran. Third, Minhas finds in 2020 is that we don't want to be perceived as weak compared to other countries, which means we won't like want to listen to them and pull our troops out, which means even in both worlds, we are going to have troops in the region that we talk about. But specifically, then they just say, if we remove our troops, we're going to do sanctions. No. Bahar finds in 20.
me that we aren't going to do sanctions on this country because it's the like because we we don't want to like just randomly sanction a country instead we would turn to our negotiations that we talk about specifically but even you have to realize all of their evidence says is that we if we don't have troops in the region then we're going to sanction them that's literally the affirmative we are removing troops from the region that means we are going to sanction them sanctions only happen in their world but there are a bunch of reasons why presence is uniquely key in iraq first Pollock finds in 2020 that they're a key to check back from fighting isis if we don't have troops in the region then isis is going to resurge in iraq which turns any of the arguments they make about humanitarian aid because they can't get it if iraq is in the region second bahar continues that u.s businesses will leave if we withdraw which means that all of their their economy will tank and all of this humanitarian assistance they talk about can't happen third Bahar finds again that Iran will come into the region and try to be more expansionism and actually cause sort of conflicts in the region, which turn any of these humanitarian assistance they talk about. But fourth, Nawak specifically finds in Iraq our troops protect the Kurds that are ongoing structural violence that would happen. And it's a regional group, which means it outweighs any of the arguments that they talk about. But their second contention talks about regional peace. They just tell you from the 80s onward, they weren't able to have peace because of the region. But they ignored what happened in the 70s. What Jones in 2012 finds is that because U.S. troops were not in the region, they were actually incredibly aggressive. And there was a regional arms with, with conflicts breaking out very easily. But secondly, in order to ensure real diplomacy that works, Alterman in 2012 finds that we need our troops to provide assurances to the countries in the region to make sure that they don't feel like they have to lash out against our country. Third, their negotiations are literally happening right now. Our memory evidence combined to what they say in cost fire proves that there's no reason that we need to remove troops. There's only a risk that our argument is true, that these countries won't like it. Their first argument specifically on this is about multilateralism. But Sakhalny and Salkin in 2019 finds that there's such vast differences between the countries that it's never actually likely to happen, and they don't share common priorities whatsoever. Secondly, Heller in 2020 finds two reasons that's not going to happen. One, the countries don't trust each other, and two, there's literally border disputes that happen every day which prevent diplomacy from happening. But third, even if you think their argument is true, Heller or to do close finds in 2020 that empirically it takes 10 years for this framework to happen, which means they'll turn to proxy conflicts in the time they're waiting. Their second argument talks about Iran. One, Cherkoe finds that actually these countries don't really trust Iran, which means they're only going to negotiate if we have U.S. presence in the region. But secondly, Heller in 2020 finds that when this GCC negotiations has tried to happen every single time, it has failed because there's such vast amounts of differences between the countries that prevent it from happening. You obviously prefer our historical analysis from Saudi Arabia that tells you that three conflicts were specifically happened and negotiations didn't. They're wrong about history and are wrong right now. All right, uh, I'm gonna sort through your document real quick to find a card I'm looking for, and then I'll start running prep once I get find it. I can probably help you if you want. All right, yeah, it's the um, it was the wait, sorry, the yeah, the um, the empiric framework takes ten years. Uh, do close talks about Europe. D U C L O S. If you want to just command F. D U C L O S. Yeah, D U C L O S. I can't spell. All right. All right, yeah, so we'll start running prep, right? That was five seconds. The, uh, if you could just help me on one more, it's um, the GCC states, like it was your first response, I guess, in our second war. It's like the GCC states don't trust Iran. Uh, I think that's uh, our case evidence actually that I was cross applying there. So if you can go to that document. Yeah, I'm heading over to that. Okay. It's the McKinnis evidence. MCI will probably get you it. MCI. Yep, sweet. Yeah. All right, we'll start running some prep right now. All right, so that's 11 total, and we're going to run a little bit more starting right uh, now.
All right, that's 35 total. Just to confirm, your third response to our second contention negotiations happening right now was the Murmi evidence, right? Our argument that was negotiations are happening right now? That negotiations are happening right now. That's mem it was memory. was the memory evidence, and I think you guys said something in cross that right. we used to yeah, All right, just making sure it's the memory evidence. All right, that's 35 total. We're going to run some more starting right now. That was 57 total. And it's just going to be uh, our case, their case. All right. Is, wait, yeah. All right. Is everyone ready? Sweet. Time can start right now. On the observation, this the evidence they read you directly contradicts the evidence they read you on their second contention saying that right now we're, we're right now we're effectively working to contain Iran. But if anything, we'd argue that their evidence, if you read it, does not contextualize at all what they're actually doing in the region. If, if anything, we're going to argue later on that the only reason they actually have expansionist sentiment in these status quo is because of the hard American pressure campaign. And you get rid of that if you allow them to, be, uh, if you allow them to come together. But on the observation, they can see the fact that now is the now is the one time that we can capitalize on uh, capitalize on to allow long during peace in the future. If anything, we'd say this is the only chance you have to prevent perpetual conflict down the line. That's going to outweigh on urgency. Uh, that's going to outweigh on magnitude because if you don't capitalize on this one chance right now, you're going to see per the accumulation of the perpetual destabilization down the line. It's going to be the largest impact in this round. But now, let's go to Iraq. We can see that there, he's not going to use the operation. Let's go over the four turns he reads. Uh, first, he says that, that we're actually removing all troops. No, we say nearly all. That's why he doesn't use sanctions in the affirmative role. Not reasonable from The second thing he says is that we're key to fighting ISIS. No, Biden 2019 indicates that Iraqi soldiers can handle it on themselves now after extensive U.S. training. 30 says that U.S. business, believe, there's no contextualization of what this impact looks like. If anything, we say since we have some presence in the region, you're still going to have our business. They don't prove that nearly like a near pullout causes. But then third, they say Iran expands. I'll cover why Iran won't expand on their first contention. Then they say we're protecting the Kurds, but Schwartz indicates that, that um, Turkey is, is actually launching attacks on the Kurds in 2019 and 2020, meaning clearly we're not doing enough to protect them and there won't be any marginal increase if you affirm the resolution. But now, let's go to where you're voting for us in this round. It's on our second contention about cooperation. They read eight responses. First, they say that Iran was incredibly aggressive, like nothing happened, like there was war in the 1970s. We can see this. Han 19 indicates that Iran stopped exporting their ideological revolution in the 1980s, which is why it stopped after, that, that's why it only happened in the 1970s. That proves, that that's going to prove like our war that Iran has negotiated down the line. Then they say troops are assurances. Clearly not. Parsi 2019 indicates the last time America perceptually disagreed engaged from the region, you actually saw nascent diplomacy begin, but the next time we re-engaged and actually sent troops to Saudi Arabia and then attacked Iran, you saw the negotiations fall apart. The third response says negotiations are happening right now. They're literally not. Their memory evidence says that our, our hard pressure campaign might fo force Iran to the table. It does not talk about any inter-Arabian uh, Persian relationships at all. That's only that's the only get that if you're affirmative. Then they say there are massive differences. They don't tell you what those look like. But for our code statement, it says that the only difference is the fact that America has entrenched the binary in the region between working with Sunni Arab states and Shia Persian states. But then the fifth row says the countries don't trust each other. We're not, um, the countries don't trust each other. Actually, no, that's not that's dis that's been disproven. The Parsi evidence says that the last time we perceptually disengaged, you actually saw nascent diplomacy between countries working together. Clearly, that gets rid of that. But then their third final six response says that empiric framework takes 10 years. That's in Europe. We'd argue that these states actually have a unique time right now because of the coronavirus. That gets rid of the 10 years thing. Then they say these states don't trust Iran. We'd say they only don't trust Iran because they're expansionist and successful. Once again, I'll cover why they stop on their case. Then they say that GCC negotiations like always fail in the past. We'd argue that's uh, consistent because of American presence. But if anything, the reason it has failed when we pulled on the past is Goldenberg 19 indicates that our, our, our unsustainable, unpredictable presence in the region is what causes recklessness from our allies and a lack of negotiations. More says if we transition to a smaller sustainable presence, you see that go away. That's why we access our impact about enduring peace. Go to Israel. Uh, two responses. For, uh, yeah. Two responses. First, conflict would happen during political upheaval. NBC Today finds that Nahayu has to win his third general election, but he's running against a centrist that is currently getting more votes than him, and the centrist is running on a platform of no conflict with Iran. Clearly, Nahayu cannot launch this. That would mean that would mean like end for his political campaign. But secondly, Han 19 says that the region that, that we actually control the link because the reason that Iran is expansionist in the status quo is because they feel internationally isolated and they have to compensate by that for consolidating land and increasing land. But if you allow them into international, uh, if you allow them into international alliances, you get rid of the, by removing the American binary. We talk about in our second contention. The fact that they're already pursuing peace right now. We you can capitalize on that. That means they have no link to this, like Israel war. If anything, nuclear war is super uncontextualized. Then on proxies, first, um, Maya says that, uh, wait, First, to say that U.S. is getting Iran to do something. No, clearly not. Read the memory evidence. It doesn't mention anything. But then that's why I prefer the Parsi evidence that says that gives you the empiricness around the last time we perceptually moved out. You saw this happen. But then on their first, uh, on the first one about Iran, if they say that Iran is decreasing right now, we argue that's because the COVID and you talk about a case. That's why the Craiger concludes they stopped showing propaganda videos. But then wait, they say they're exporting ide ideology. I already covered that stop in the 1980s. And then we control once again control the link in the international isolation. Then on Saudi Arabia, Parsi, like once again, the Parsi evidence, Saudi Arabia has stopped attacking. But if anything, the reason that Saudi always acts out is the more and more Goldenberg evidence I talked about earlier in this round, meaning that if we, since more says that it's sustained 
sustainable, a predictable presence of a smaller amount of troops would, would allow Saudi Arabia to feel more secure because we're no longer unpredictable. You don't see them lash out at all. But if anything, Hakkadian choose that Saudi Arabia cannot afford to go do a lot of proxy conflict. And at the end, I'd say we outweigh on like time frame because of the urgency. All right. You mind if I call for that last piece of evidence, like Saudi Arabia can or something? Yeah. All right, it's been sent. Hey, let me go look at it real quick. Okay, starting prep now. Okay, cool. 15 seconds. Uh, yeah, I'm ready for cross whenever you are. Okay, cool. Yeah. Mm -hmm. You can have the first question. Yep. All right. So let's talk about this Parsi evidence that you read, right? I think it's in reference to the attack that happened on October 14th, right? Yeah. Okay. So in October, or the Parsi then writes his article in like November, right? I'm pretty, no, it's from January 2020. Okay, Except sure. The, Janu January, January. Even, even better, even better. So what happened after October, like with U.S. troops? Um, after October, what happened? We sent them 3,000 troops to Saudi Arabia to deter against Iran's threat. When did, when did we send them those troops? What day? What day? I think yeah, like, October 16th, if I'm not correct, incorrect. I'm going right, to search it out. Here's what I say we prefer your evidence to our, to our evidence to your evidence. Parsi writes his analysis of the entire timeline well after all the events were carried out, which means that they, he has a lot more insight into the actual Wait. motivations and calculus of the actors. But My what bad. We say it is was that, November. Yeah, but what, cool. Yeah, what, 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 what we say is that Parsi, what I also like added in, in rebuttal is that Parsi concludes that the United States perceptual re-engagement in the Soleimani killings actually ended negotiations that were ongoing. But okay. you, have a sure. you can have a question. All right. So yep. yeah, let's talk about, uh, let's talk about why these states don't trust Iran. Why is that? Because they believe Iran's aggressive. All right. Which so will we obviously Iran, contend. If, so if we win Iran's, well, wait, actually, wait. If Iran is pursuing peace initiatives in the status quo, why would Saudi Arabia or why would these Arab states believe that Iran is aggressive? Because the reason they're pursuing peace initiatives is because they're essentially backed into our corner, which is what our memory evidence is. They now, right. it's like, like, quote, it's like they now see the benefit of negotiations. If, we, if Iran offered peace initiatives in 2020, why did the United States not capitalize on that chance and create long enduring peace? What do you, what do you mean? Iran offered a regional security architecture in 2020. Why did America well, not it's, say, it's, hey, Eric, this is the chance to have like your long-term peace? That's what we say is like happening right now. It's no, no, obviously no, it, it already, not no, like, one they, and they've done. Been they've been pursuing it since, since February. So why has America not capitalized on that opportunity? Dude, because it's been two months. You can't no, solve Middle either, East instability either, in two no, months. The issue is, America has not even responded to the peace initiative because our codes evidence gives, gives you the calculus of America says that they will not entertain any a lot, any regional security architecture that includes Iran. So how oh, do you boy. ever have peace in your world? Our argument is you don't need this like architecture, like you just have negotiations. It's, no, it's, like a, it's like a regional cooperation agreement. We can give you the codes evidence, but my question is if America won't even entertain that possibility, how do you ever have peace? 
well, because the other countries, if America leaves, don't trust Iran. Wait, that's not that answering my question. I'm asking the status quo. How do you it's ever have time? Peace? It's because the U.S. negotiations bilaterally are is what we're going to go for. I'm going to call for a lot of evidence. Uh, the Vine evidence that says Iraqis can do it by themselves. The Swartz evidence that talks about, uh, oh, sorry. Um, the Vine evidence that talks about how Iraqis can do it by themselves. The Swartz evidence that talks about Turkey attacking the Kurds. The Han evidence that um, Iraq stopped exporting their ideology in the 80s and their methodology is still the same today. Uh, and the Goldenberg 19 evidence about a lack of negotiations. I can repeat if you'd like. All right, yeah, that'll give us a second. Those yeah, you're are... good. Wait, so do you want to see Goldenberg or more? Goldenberg says that like unpredictable presence make the allies right. Goldenberg. All I just sent Goldenberg, the rest are on their way. Yeah, I'll just wait for the rest. All right, so we've sent Goldenberg. We've sent the uh, uh, Stopped Exporting Revolutionary Ideology. What were the others? Uh, the Swartz evidence and the Vine evidence. Thank you, by the All way, right. Ron. No, there we're waiting on two. I'm just chilling. Uh, yeah, so I. I'm not sure what yeah, that is. Yeah, one more. It's sending right now. Yeah, the, the right next now. one's sending right now. Yeah, just divine evidence. Thank you. Um, yeah, and it's a by minute. Yeah, it's been sent. All right, cool. Uh, the second I get it, we're going to start prep. I'm going to grab a bottle of water real quick, too. Can you get me one as well? Might be a little bit difficult, but I can try. All right, thanks, Ryan. All right, uh, we just got the evidence. Wait, this is not Vine. Yeah, it's a different name. It was just what was what? the name? Right? Vine? It was oh, Vine it's... was the name, yeah. Oh, yeah, yeah, okay, you're right, you're right. This definitely talks about it. Okay, we're going to start prep now.
stop crap. I stopped like 10 seconds ago. My headset was malfunctioning. Um, can you send a third response about proxy conflicts, about something about propaganda videos? Uh, yeah, just to be clear, that was my response to um, the, like, I gave an alternative cause for why Iran is like decreasing military. Yeah, I just send that. Yeah, just give us one second. Sorry, I have to recut it real quick. All right, we got it. We're sending it. All right, awesome. I'll probably take like five seconds of prep, and then I'll probably just give the speech. All right, it's sent, or it should be. I still haven't gotten anything. Um, I don't know if the judges have. Uh, yeah. Oh, I just got it. Okay, cool. All right, uh, we're going to start prep right now. I got it. All right, uh, that was an additional 15 seconds. I think we have 20, 15 left, 15 left. All right, uh, the order of this speech is going to start on our first contention about Israel. It's going to go to our second contention about proxy conflicts, and then it's going to go to their second contention about um, the Middle East and cooperation. Oh, on the what? What, the COVID-19 stuff? No, the Iraq. I guess that's true. Yeah. just. Our case, their case. <laughs> all right, um, are all my judges ready to begin? Mr. Pike, are you ready? Awesome, okay. All right, 
at the top, you can, you can see that Netanyahu won't do it, which means that there aren't going to be any, they're not getting access to their turn about Iranian expansionism. But more importantly, the um, they sign, they try and say that Iranian expansionism is, is it because of US binary. I'm going to, oh, I'm going to answer that below. They say the Murmi evidence is bad. It's really not. It literally says, quote, the US has made moves and the entire article is about how Iran is currently negotiating now. But the maximum campaign pressure is working and will yield to Iranian concessions. As French in 19.5, that maximum pressure has placed Iran under an extreme undress as Trump's approach has opened new possibilities to address the shortcomings of the Iran deal, which from 20, 2019, prove that negotiations are working now. They say the Parsi evidence. The Parsi evidence has nothing to do with Iran. It's about Saudi Arabia. I'll get to that at the bottom. The Parsi evidence is about Saudi Arabian airstrike. doesn't respond to Iran at all. They say something about um, um, propaganda videos. There is no warrant as to why this has changed in either world. It's just an assertion. We would contend, we would contend that our Balder evidence literally says that Iranian aggression is on the decline right now because of U.S. pressure in the region. 30 years of history proves this argument by the fact that Iran hasn't lashed out ever since the United States has been within the region. Two weighing mechanisms. First is uniqueness. Negotiations are happening right now per our Murmi evidence, which means it's a risk of solvency for the conflict going on now. And second is on probability, because historical examples prove that Iran and Saudi Arabia will or will lash out without U.S. presence, and I'll get to that on Saudi Arabia. But more importantly, on Saudi Arabia, they read the Parsi evidence. The Parsi evidence is terrible. It's literally it's it's, it's uh, literally from January talking about how there was uh, fear-mongering about decreasing troops led to um, an increase in aggression. This is just not what happened. Blanchard, from our case, literally says October, three months before it happened, the U.S. actually redeployed more troops, and that is what led to negotiations. Their evidence is just wrong on time frame here. But secondary they say Saudi Arabia can't do proxy conflicts and there's no proxy conflicts now. A, this evidence is from 2017. Our Blanchard evidence about U.S. ties being high now is from 2020. And it's there's no reason why Saudi Arabia is a predictable actor. The U.S. is the only one that is. But also the Saudi Arabia can't stuff is empirically disproven by the Goldenberg evidence that Cole's conceded that says Bahrain, Qatar, and Syria, where there were conceded examples that it actually led to war. They have also conceded our impact about proxy wars, which would be really bad for them. The Iran scenario also turns their Iraqi contention because it's the only scenario for filling the United States disengagement on their case. Firstly, at the COVID-19 stuff, the reason is because of U.S. military presence. This is proven by the fact that Iran has uh, Iran backed down before COVID-19 happened, which means it has nothing to do with COVID-19. It's not a unique impact. But more importantly, um, on the on the first contention about Iran, they say the Vine evidence proves that Iraqis can do themselves. The evidence is terrible. You should read it. It says they are more comparable, but it never says they can do it themselves. Our Pollock evidence, which postdates them, finds that Iraq can't do it by themselves, and this in turn is going to lead to the corruption of aid. The Bahar evidence, they say there's no context. However, without U.S. forces, you reduce nearly all troops, which means nearly all businesses leave which would be bad because oil companies would leave. That hurts the economy and is an independent turn on their case. At the bottom, they say uh, the Han evidence proves that Iran stopped the exportation in the 80s. This doesn't matter. Sullivan finds that multilateral relations are ultimately always going to fail, which means that regardless of ideological expectation, they're always going to fail, which means that only U.S. coercion is key. They have also dropped the, uh, the brand's evidence that says only U.S. assurances is what's going to lead to negotiations. This is crucial because the two dropped warrants on the Heller evidence on the bottom of their second warrant literally find that A, their negotiations are never going to work because of border disputes, and B, mutual distrust proves that no multilateral cooperation is ever going to work. This is proven by the fact that there has never been multilateralism in the region without the United States. The Duclos evidence, they say it's about Europe. However, the evidence is comparing the European situation to the Middle Eastern situation um, and finds that in the Middle Eastern it would be worse. Sorry. Do you think I could see the evidence that you read on the observation Iraq back down before coronavirus? Uh, Drew's pulling it up right now. Also, real quick, was the memory evidence in the rebuttal doc or the speech doc? The memory evidence is in the case doc. All right. And I can send over the evidence I read in uh, summary if you want, the French evidence, if you'd like. Yes, I would, I would like that. Yeah, Ryan, I'd be honored to send it to you. Thank you. OK, I sent the before coronavirus stuff. Uh, Tyler, that, that's, the, that's the evidence I was asking for, what Drew just sent. Uh, no, those are two different things. Oh, wait. If that's what you want, you're good. Yeah, the, the, I'm just making sure the response to the observation I run back down before. Yeah, this isn't about the observation. Okay, all right, all right. Yeah. All right. Are y'all taking prep? Um, no, we're I'm, pulling up the card. Yeah, yeah, yeah cool, cool, cool. Just double checking.
All right, we got it. Um, we'll start time right now. All right, sweet. So that's seven seconds. We are at um, we're at a minute seven, and I'm gonna just pull up your memory evidence real quick. Give me one second. I have to open down. I have to open up the doc back up. All right, we have the memory evidence up. We're gonna run some more starting right now. All right, so that now we're at a minute 17. Um, it should be good on cards. We're gonna we're gonna run some prep starting right. Actually, real quick, I'm sorry, there's just one final card. I think it was in your summary. Yeah, what's up? Um, the Blanchard evidence? Uh, it's in our case, first card on Saudi Arabia. All right, I'm going to... The bottom. All right, we have about 10 seconds left. We'll run some right now. All right, sweet. That was three seconds. We have seven left, and we're going to run the rest of those right now. I believe that is time. All right. So I'll go down there. Actually, case. and real quick, just before we give the summary, like this is impressive, I just want to make sure like we got your response right. The last thing you said on, because I think it cut out, the last thing you said on our second intention was something about like a middle. It was right after the no cooperation. It was like a middle something. I, did you get middle? Middle East? <laughs> no, that yeah. might have been it. What was the final thing you extended? The final on? response was like the 15 years. It's like you guys said Europe. We oh, like, yeah, yeah. All right, all right. Just yeah. making sure. We were like, it's looking it, at the Middle East. It might have been the Middle East. All right. So my order is going to be just on their second contention, then down our case. All right. Yeah. All right, is everyone ready? Yeah, okay. And we can start time. Now let's start off on our second contention. The couple things that they extend, they say that Iran is currently negotiating because of the US's maximum pressure campaign. The problem is they fail to respond to one golden bird, which tells you that right now, the United States' unpredictable presence is stopping literally any sort of negotiations from ever being successful. But additionally, they tell you to read their memory cards because it's specific, but realize, read their memory card. It literally does not instigate any single actual negotiation that's actually happening. It just says that it could happen. We tell you specifically through our codes evidence that it's literally never going to happen. Negotiations between Iran and either country are not going to happen as long as the United States is in the region 
because the United States is continuing to entrench the divide between these countries. As long as you have the United States there, there's never going to be negotiations. Additionally, our policy evidence is super explicit in saying that the last time the United States even perceptually pulled back, there were negotiations. They say not to buy the policy evidence, but really the policy evidence is super good because it analyzes after the fact and is able to analyze all of the regional actors sort of like uh, actions, which is going to be the most like valuable piece of evidence. But even so, you can still buy the fact that literally negotiations aren't going to happen with the United States. But then let's continue on. That's on their first thing. But then on their secondly talking about Saudi Arabia, realize they completely dropped the response my partner reads you about hand, which is that the internal link to accessing any sort of co conflict or any sort of thing off Saudi Arabia is the fact that Iran is going to aggress. The only world in which Iran aggresses is the world with the United States because the United States is entrenching Iran with this feeling of feeling super internationally isolated. Iran is only, or hand specifically says that Iran is only expansionist because they're internationally isolated. If we pull out and we, we allow Iran to create negotiations with all the other countries in the area, they're not going to feel isolated, not going to aggress. Saudi no longer has any reason to either go to proxy conflicts or go to any conflict at all. Then they just try to say, extend our impact on proxy conflicts, no quantification, no nothing, no, not very much warranting. Don't buy that, you can't vote. But then let's go on to our case. Starting off with the top of our case, let's talk about like the corona stuff. They say that US military presence was the reason why people pulled back, realize their card, the time frame aligns with corona. When corona started, people started pulling back. But then I continue on to say that they dropped the urgency weighing which is telling you that because right now is an opportune time that countries are starting to negotiate and work together on sort of like medical stuff because of Corona, it is the best time to capitalize on negotiations that could possibly happen, which is where we go on to, let's move down our case. So then they talk about sort of like this turn about sort of like Iraq and like ISIS and then talking about like businesses. Realize, first of all, never contextualize. You don't know what you're running out there. But additionally, realize that we say that if we can solve for overall conflict in the region by having a bunch of negotiations, you're going to have less terrorism in the long run. They don't have an impact there. But additionally, when they talk about hurting the economy, we say solving the conflict is a lot more important. But then our second contention, they pretty much literally like don't respond to it. On our C2, we're going to win the round. The first response that's going to be extended with that it always fails whereas we frontline that Goldenberg says that allies don't negotiate as long as America is unpredictable we solve with more second they say that U.S. assurances are crucial but for our analysis which tells you that the negotiations have literally never been conducted as long as the United States is in the region we are better at giving warranting and finally they say their 10 years evidence is good this really has zero warrant but for the fact that Iran wants peace right now and the only thing preventing this from happening is America's actions in the region extend our Bikil evidence which tells you that there is going to be successful negotiations which is going to stop long-term conflict in the region the only actual scenario there's likelihood that has an actual likelihood of happening is ours where we reduce conflict in the region all right sweet are you guys ready for grand cross uh yeah let me get my timer out all right um are all the judges good for grand crossfire uh yeah all right awesome okay so you say the time frame aligns um iran brought back their weapons from a state of heightened readiness in February before the coronavirus was in the Middle East. So how is this response true? Wait, what do you mean? Like, so you have, you have made a claim that- Our part is from is, January about the coronavirus in the Middle East. I don't, I don't think the current, there was no quarantines in, the, in January in yeah, the Middle quarantine East. Quarantine doesn't mean that coronavirus We're just talking about corona? issues of coronavirus. Yeah. Wait, so you're telling me before the Iraqi government even imposed a quarantine, they were thinking about strategic military calculus. That, that makes no sense. There's no relation there. No, what no, we're wait. saying is that because Corona existed, countries realized yeah. we give the two warrants and constructive, but it's basically that countries realize that they have yeah. to use resources wait, wait, elsewhere and, and they so have does, to so, it together. But even let's do the comparison. There, we both have evidence on this question. Let's let's look, right? Like our Baldor evidence explicitly says that a, a redeployment of US military presence distinctively delivered a message to Iran and they literally our lowered evidence, their ICBMs. Our evidence, yeah. not our about evidence corona. also our, not evidence about corona. That our evidence that's in the email chain also said that the coronavirus had a specifically terrible effect on Iran that even led them to stop showing propaganda videos. So we both what piece of what piece of evidence says that they um, brought wait, back wait, their wait, weapons wait. from a height of readiness because no, it's in wait, of COVID. Wait, real quick, chain, real quick. Yeah, just show me the evidence. What's heightened, the evidence? Wait, wait, more importantly, your heightened readiness doesn't mean anything because we would argue that, that that any like still aggressiveness by Iran is because of like the U.S. presence. So like that has to be like wait. Dealt so so Ryan, um, can you give me a major conflagration that the United States and Iran have been in together ever since the U.S. military yeah, started no, no, that no, no, actually no, materialized? Can't... Give wait, me one I example. Do, wait, 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 I don't know the noun you use. Like, give an example of what? Yeah, conflagorize, which means like rise up to actually escalate. Like, give me one example. Yeah, 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 yeah. So what, what we're talking about is the fact that all negotiations and stuff like that have always failed because of okay. William who says that United States presence makes the region unpredictable. Is there an example of a, a big flare up because our, of US Iran? Can you give me our, a single example? Our impact isn't no. about a war. Okay. Okay, our that's fine. Wait, wait, wait. Our about, impact our isn't impact. about a U.S. Iran war. No, that's fine. You're good. It's about ours. Uh, can I get a question now? Wait, 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 wait. Real quick, real quick. Wait, why? Explain yourself. 
I, what? What? I, Ryan, I don't know. Wait, how to why does that question. matter? Why? Why does what matter? Why does this lack of comp flag uprising mean anything? <laughs> Wait, wait, all right. We were, all right. So I, I, our, I think our argument is going, like that there was still regional conflict, even if it didn't involve so the United the States. So the coronavirus thing, like we've read evidence that like for the past 30 years, they have always oh, conceded yeah, yeah. Oh, yeah. And, and, we, and we responded to that by saying that what your evidence specifically doesn't mention is that they actually entered negotiations. So I mean, it doesn't the, matter. We are we preventing do. conflict. Honestly, negotiations so, we'll doesn't matter much. It's about no, no, conflict. It matters. It's there's there's nothing. Let me finish before you both cut me off. I'm going to make my point. For the past 30 years, there has been no major escalation. I've asked them in Crossfire, and they read their evidence. No, no major. Uh, yeah, we agree. There's yeah, been no there's major no escalation. US with the Iran war. Awesome. All right, we're good. Perfect. Cool. We have four seconds left. How's your day, Ron? Sophia, how are your uh, days? All right. All right. That's good to hear. Uh, Drew and I have ten, 10 or 15. seconds. Ten. ten seconds. Or we're no, getting, fifteen. My bad. Fifteen. Fifteen. We're gonna use it all. Uh, they have conceded. We conceded something. Okay, is, let me know when everyone's ready, or I guess, is anyone not ready? That's just easier. It's going to be starting on our second contention. Make sure you give them no new responses, no new way, no nothing in second final focus because we can't respond to it. They only argument on Iran is that we that negotiations are failing right now. But our argument is that Iran doesn't go into proxy conflicts because they fear U.S. troops in the region. We have told you past 30 years they have always conceded to United States military in the region, which is evidence that has conceded. But we will also win negotiations. The memory evidence, the first few lines says that Iran is coming to the table right now because of presence. Our evidence is so much better than anything they, they read in the tent, which means their coats evidence doesn't matter. The Parsi evidence, they extend it through ink. Blanchard says the reason it happened is because we sent troops right after the attack, which means they felt secured, which is where you can extend then the brand's evidence that says that the only chance there has been diplomacy in the region or anything concessions or no proxy conflicts is because the United States was in the region. Best evidence in the debate, which means they can't extend Parsi without a warrant on this. They're Saudi Arabia. They just say it's only about Iran being aggressive. But this is disproven by historical precedent. The Goldenberg evidence was not in summary. That looks to three times where if the U.S. pulled out, it led to a, a, a Syria intervention, a Qatar and Bahrain, all attacks from from Saudi Arabia. Each of these leads to millions of lives lost and I'll jack the chance for negotiations. That's a pretty easy place to vote for historical precedent. But at the top of their case, to get any access to their way in about urgency, they need to win that negotiations will happen. Specifically on this second contention, don't let them just extend evidence without warrants. We have you three reasons they distinctly failed. The first is what our Heller evidence says, that the countries don't trust each other. Saudi Arabia doesn't trust the UAE, Bahrain, Qatar, Kuwait, which means none of these negotiations have and has not been responded to. Second, there are territorial problems in the Middle East and border disputes, which means countries will not negotiate and they will always come through. And the third is that the, the, the adopt do close piece of evidence that says it will take 15 years for any negotiations to happen. Logically, think about it. If there are no negotiations happening for 15 years, the countries will turn to diplomacy. We are way ahead on historical precedent on this evidence. We tell you three conflicts that have started because of Saudi Arabia. Each one kills millions of lives and prevents negotiation from happening. Yeah, they have no way in on this. All right. Uh, we're out of prep. Nothing about the ISIS stuff. They don't talk. All right. It's going to – it's going to go uh, our case and then their case. Yeah. Everyone ready? Sweet. Let's look to the observation. What they concede is the magnitude wing that went along with the urgency wing that says that even though, even if we don't win 100% probability, the fact that we will solve for so much accumulation of perpetual destabilization in the long term through the vacuole evidence by allowing for long term peace agreements means that you should immediately look to this argument first to capitalize on this moment of opportunity. That was in the summary. This is the first argument you look for. Let's see why we win it. Go to our second contention. They give you three responses, all of which were frontline in the summary. The first one says there's no trust, and the second one says that they won't work together because of territory. We group, the, we group those together and respond with the Parsi evidence that said, 
you can call for it. We'll put it in the email chain. That when America perceptually disengaged and did not back Saudi Arabia after Iran attacks, you saw a nascent diplomacy form between the UAE, between Saudi Arabia, and between Iran. That proves our warranting that if America is to perceptually disengage from the region, you allow for diplomacy to function bet between the states. That's also going to respond to their 15 years analysis, which we also made in the summary, which is that since America, it, since Coates concludes America is the unique factor inhibiting the Arab states from working with the peace initiatives that Iran is right now putting out means that the second you affirm, you can see quick, uh, you can see quick access to our link, which is the Vakil evidence that says that this will, that the only way to have long enduring peace in the Middle East is if you unite the Persian state and the Arab state. That gives us to our Kamak evidence and means that if you don't vote off this argument, you will see perpetual destabilization in the long term. Let's see why you're not voting for them. Their link extension gets really messy in the summary and final focus. They, for, they extend their link on Iran without implicating why it means anything for their impact, but I'll go through it. First, they say there's negotiations right now. No, it doesn't. It simply says Iran is not attacking the United States or acting up right now. That's very important because they have no evidence ever of negotiations ever occurring with Iran. That's, that's because of our code's evidence that says that America inhibits them from coming to the table. That's why Iran's not coming to the table. Evidence doesn't work. You'll never see it function in the status quo. But let's go for the link they go for. They go for Saudi Arabia. All they do is extend the Blanchard analysis, but we give you the parsing evidence and we give you a reason to prove our evidence. Our evidence was written in 2020 after their evidence and analyzed the calculus of every actor in the region. That's why you see, a, you see a decrease. But the final reason you can't vote for them is the Goldenberg evidence that was definitely in the summary speech. I put it on the doc, which says that um, it's, it never worked in the past because of America's unpredictability, but you solve for that with a sustainable stance. That means you don't see these allies act out and you see the long enduring peace. The magnitude means That's that you have to look time. at our argument first. Their impact has no That's empirical... Time. like. Good debate, y'all. Over, I can't see. I mean, I went five seconds over, and you stopped me. So, just keeping it fair. Good. Okay, I think we have a decision. Um, I guess I'll, I'll announce it and I'll talk first. It was a 2-1 decision for North Broward. Um, and I uh, was in the dissent, so I'll talk. Um, I normally don't look at cards so much and I normally don't take so long. So I apologize for that. Um, and I guess that brings me to a general point. Like, um, to be honest, like this is not the kind of debate that I really like to see in public forum. Um, I mean, I think this is really just policy light. Um, and I'd much, much rather have the debate be like, conversational and much less about all the cards that were presented. Um, but, you know, both teams sort of went that way. Um, so that wasn't really a differentiating factor, I guess, but just a general comment that um, I don't, you know, I really want public forum to stay a form of debate that an ordinary person can judge. Um, and I don't think that it should be so much about, um, the evidence as much as you guys made it about the evidence. Um, but in the end, I decided that um, the two pieces that it came down to for me were the um, Parsi and the memory evidence. Um, and the big question was whether the US is, US military presence is helping to bring about more peace or it's hurting. And I wish that in you know, both teams coming into summary had really clarified that that's how the round should be viewed. Um, but neither team really did. Everybody was just, in my view, just continuing rebuttal. Nobody was taking a step back and giving the bigger picture, explaining um, what the story of the round really is. Um, so in my view, it came down to, you know, is the U.S. military presence making things worse, making things better? Um, and the con team is arguing that we need, I guess, the U.S. military action, U.S. military presence is what's 
bringing Iran to the table. Um, and, you know, I would grant that it's true that U.S. presence there has prevented a conflagration, has prevented a worse explosion, but that doesn't mean that Iran has been sort of neutralized or Iran is acting peacefully. I mean, Iran has continued a lot of hostility, um, just done it more covertly. Um, so I, I don't really buy the narrative that the U.S. presence is the answer. Um, and if you look at the evidence, you know, you're, uh, Blanche, I think the Eisenstadt was from 2013, um, and the Brandt evidence was from 2018. Um, so the two cards that I, I thought really were most applicable were the Parsi card and the memory card. And the memory card was from January. Um, and really, it was just predictive. I mean, it didn't, it wasn't really based on what has actually happened. I mean, there is a lot of analysis in it, but it basically said that um, if, like, if we maintain the pressure, then Iran will come to the table. Iran will see the benefits of negotiation and will then negotiate. Um, on the other side, the Parsi evidence um, was based on things that actually occurred that when the U.S. backed off some pressure that, in fact, that was when Iran sort of acted more reasonably and was willing to negotiate. So um, in the end, I found that more credible. Um, I don't think the U.S. military presence, and especially when, you know, it's just, it's just playing with fire um, with, with Trump and attacking Soleimani and, and the, um, the memory evidence, too, talks about that, too, how... Um, it certainly created a lot of anti-American sentiment and, you know, that was there too, although um, it did sort of analyze that away. But um, so in the end, I found the, the Parsi evidence stronger than the memory evidence and I voted for the pro side. Um, so I'll, I'll go next. I thought it was a really close debate, um, which is indicative of the fact that we all took a lot of time to sift through evidence and like kind of try to make reach a decision on like whether negotiations happen with or without U.S. presence. Um, I agree with uh, um, what the previous judge just said about how uh, the Parsi evidence is probably better than the memory evidence because the Parsi evidence says that negotiations like happened, uh, whereas memory is like maybe in the future like we might have enough pressure to lead to like lead them to negotiations. But I also had to examine um, the Blanchard and the Brands evidence from North Broward, and I thought that that kind of like through, through reading it, I actually like um, saw that it does state that negotiations have happened with U.S. pressure. So like basically, like it, it kind of non-uniques the Parsi claim that's like negotiations only happen when the U.S. removes their troops. I think Parsi is one example of when the U.S. said that they're going to remove troops and then negotiations actually followed. But I think that in, as a general trend, like at the end of the debate, it was too hard for me to resolve whether or not like negotiations will continue to happen or, or like what's going to happen going forward. Because I think both teams give examples of when negoti negotiations have happened, um, like with their side being true. Um, also, like then there's like this Coates evidence about like them needing like U.S. opposition um, or like that the U.S. like is like, stopping them from negotiations. Um, I think that um, basically the fact that like their brand's evidence says that like that uh, the U.S. pressure has like caused negotiations in the past answers that. And then also there's like some terminal defense from North Broward that wasn't the greatest, but kind of says that like negotiations in the long term will probably fail because of ideological differences, which like isn't really like, I, I mean, like, I don't know, I guess both teams kind of agree that negoti negotiations have happened, which kind of disproves this. But I think in terms of long term solvency, like, um, I don't know, it, it kind of like takes a little bit off from the uh, from that argument. I also think like the main issue with negotiations is that like there was never an example of like something meaningful or concrete that's actually ever happened. The entire debate is just like this word negotiations and there's, it's just very unclear to see like what happens between Saudi Arabia and Iran, right? Like Parsi just says that like they started talking more when the U.S. like removed troops, but it doesn't say what actually happened. So in terms of concrete like evidence, it was, it was like, I don't know, it was pretty hard for me to see what was happening here. So because of that, my, my vote is like, one of two things. So, so I kind of almost presume Neg because it's like very hard for me to re resolve like what happens with negotiations. But then also Neg has like a little bit of offense because there's this extension of this like random card that like I wish North Broward did a lot more work on it, but says that like 
uh, when the U.S. pulls out, there's been three instances of like Saudi Arabia like just lashing out and like and like some random conflict, right? So it's like very not contextualized, but I think there's like some evidence of a historical precedent in which Saudi Arabia has lashed out when the U.S. like leaves. Um, and so I think that those three like examples are probably like more indicative of a general trend than like the party evidence of like, hey, they negotiated this one time. So that's why I voted neg. Do you mind if I ask just uh, two quick questions? Yeah. So I make sure. So the memory evidence talking about U.S. Iran negotiations in the past disproves the Coates evidence talking about Arab Iran relations never happening. Um. Sorry. What? Say it again. Wait, so the the memory evidence you prefer the memory evidence about U.S. Iran negotiations happening in the past, and that disproves the Coates evidence that talks about why Arab Iran relations never happen. No. So so like yeah. So memory memory I didn't think it was that great. There's actually a. a piece of evidence from brands that says that negotiations have been happening like it's uh yeah it says like it's like basically u.s like reassurance of saudi arabia is what's allowed oh, yeah. all right then just the second thing so did you get the all right i just like did you hear or or never mind never mind it's all right it's all right <laughs> okay um is wait are you done talking sorry yeah i'm done okay um, so I voted neg. I didn't think the debate was that close considering the amount of impact weighing done in the final focuses. I think the app starts to run out of time consistently towards like the end of your speeches so that you don't have like enough time to do like your weighing, I guess, so you try to do it at the end. Um, I'm left with the neg Saudi war impacts and the app's ne like negotiations lead to enduring peace impact. I think that the neg does a better job with impact calc in the final focus and actually gets to impact comparison with enough time left. I don't think that either one of your impact scenarios are particularly likely, but I do think the NEG's impact is marginally more likely and its magnitude was like actually explained in Final Focus. I think the NEG's impact defense on negotiations is better than the app's defense on disengagement. And I thought the Hell card in particular was pretty good on this. It says like direct quote, like historical border disputes has like created deep seated distrust among the countries, which means that even if negotiations do come to fruition, they'll never be successful, which also means that I don't have to look to the Parsi evidence because that pretty much just discusses whether or not like negotiations will initially happen or not. Not that they'll be like successful in the long term. I I also like thought differently I thought that memory was better than Parsi because it explicitly outlines that military negotiations are key and like it gives like a list of reasons oh, like granted like I don't think the neg like extended a lot of those reasons but like the card is pretty good itself um I also looked at the app's defense in the neg's case and I don't think that Goldenberg makes any insight about how negotiations have never worked in the past if anything it's about like current public sentiment towards Middle East war so I think the memory evidence is far better because it directly states how Iran is being pressured like militarily into negotiation yeah uh just one quick question how do you feel about the app wing on like on the mat did you catch that in the rebuttal summer final focus like on the observation sorry could, you just cut out in the middle so uh, did, did, you, did you catch the app wing in either the rebuttal summer final focus on the magnitude like on the observation right like you you, I had that as like an overview at the top for all the like the COVID nineteen about how there's like a ten year time frame about how like it'll solve for accumulation how you should look to it first. But I don't think that that garners you any offense, and also I don't think that you ever really quantified like what that impact is versus for theirs. I had like specifically like this like the war will lead to millions of lives lost, etc. Um, and then they list like the three examples of the war. I think they have Syria, Qatar, and Bahrain as like the ones I have. I think that it was just like a timing issue in my opinion maybe like if you got to it with more time or like start out with more time and explained it in depth maybe that would have helped thank you good debate y'all thanks yeah good debate hey. thanks thank good you mr pike guys. thank you everyone